the Center of Biomolecular Magnetic Resonance is dedicated to the application and the use of biomolecular magnetic resonance to important biological questions. It consists of seven research groups with altogether about 100 PhD students and postdocs. This makes it to one of the largest centers in the world. Our research center is unique in a number of different ways. First of all, the full range of techniques of biomolecular magnetic resonance are available. This starts with solution state NMR, it contains solid state NMR, EPR spectroscopy, as well as dynamic nuclear polarization. In addition, all of our seven research groups are independent faculty members, which has resulted in a prospering diversity of research topics. These research topics include, for example, RNA biology, cancer biology, membrane protein biophysics, or fundamental questions such as folding of biopolymers. BMRZ in Frankfurt is one of the largest European centers for magnetic resonance, and our role is to provide access to European researchers that come to Frankfurt and conduct their experiments at our site. They use our expertise and they use our large NMR spectrometers to get experimental results that they could not obtain at their own places. My own research is dedicated to functional aspects of membrane proteins. We would like to understand how these proteins work at the atomic level. How is the catalytic cycle of an ABC transporter coupled to the transport cycle? How does a G-protein coupled receptor translocate signals across the membrane? Or how can a microbial rhodopsin convert light into an electrochemical gradient across the membrane? In order to understand membrane protein function, it is very important to consider the context of the membrane. And therefore, it's very important to use techniques which allow to study these proteins directly within the lipid bilayer. Solid state NMR is a, such a technique which allows us to do so. One possibility uh, to probe uh, reaction kinetics at membrane surfaces is to use time-resolved solid state NMR. My group focuses on studying the folding of proteins and RNA by time-resolved NMR. We use lasers to initiate folding reactions within the NMR spectrometer and we then monitor the changes in structure of these molecules, RNAs and proteins in real time and then calculate structures of intermediates during the reaction. One very interesting example for time-resolved NMR is to follow the reaction of rhodopsin when light enters our eye. When light enters our eye, rhodopsin absorbs light and changes its structure. And it does so not only with, on one pathway, but on parallel pathways. And we are able to map out these parallel pathways of rhodopsin. I and my group are working in the field of electron parameter resonance. Uh, we develop and uh, improve the methods to especially to investigate biological systems. We are advancing the methods in two respects. The first is we go to high magnetic fields and the second one we go to advanced pulsing schemes. High field EPR spectroscopy allows us to measure a very, very small amount of samples as for example in cells. With the new pulse methods, we are able uh, to detect uh, very, very small distance changes in proteins and protein environments. Bringing all these uh, new techniques and advances together, uh, I believe that there is a good chance uh, that uh, finally we can observe very, very tiny amounts of paramagnetic molecules in the sample, maybe a single molecule. Dynamic nuclear polarization uh, allows us to uh, approach questions which were inaccessible so far. It provides a tremendous signal enhancement. For membrane proteins, which we are studying here, a typical enhancement we achieve is 50. 
This results in reduction of NMR time by a factor about 2,500. We are able to use DNP to approach um, proteins which are completely inaccessible otherwise, for example, G-protein coupled receptors, which are very delicate systems. Uh, by using DMP, we are able to observe, for example, binding events of ligands to these receptors and understand how signal transduction takes place. Using this technique in combination with an illumination setup, we can trap photointermediate states at low temperatures. This allows us to do science that would be otherwise impossible. Our focus are membrane proteins or other difficult proteins. So we focus on the self reproduction of all kinds of proteins which are problematic to be produced in conventional cell-based expression systems. Major applications of self free technology are the fast access to protein samples, the possibility to uh, produce highly problematic proteins like membrane proteins or toxins and to label the proteins in many different combinations suitable for NMR applications. In the future, uh, the techniques available of BMRZ will be increasingly integrated with other complementary methods of structural biology. In addition, we will see increasing applications to mammalian systems and increasing applications of our methods in the cellular context. Thank you.